What's going on guys, my name is Renegade, today we are here for my full guide and review of Lightcaster. Now, let's get into the guide portion of this video, first of all. So, for the weapon range, the weapon range is not too important with this class. I found slightly faster results when soloing with the uh, with an unstable weapon range, so if you can go unstable, then I would recommend it. However, it's not too important. I've not really noticed much difference between unstable and stable. However, unstable, you land slightly better crits, and as a result, you get slightly better DPS overall. Um, but in other areas you do suffer because of unstable. I think you do um, end up with slightly worse mana regeneration as a result of being unstable. So you, if you are having mana problems, then I would recommend just going stable. But that's off of, like, I haven't got any definitive proof of that. So take that, that with a grain of salt. Um, really, weapon range doesn't affect it that much overall though. So that's not too much of an issue to worry about. Now, as for your enhancements, I've found the best results with Wizard enhancements. You could go Spellbreaker, but Wizard seems to be the best results for uh, soloing, for soloing at, an, at a good speed. Um, mix in some healer, I think, will get you better results on your heal. Again, take that with a grain of salt. Um, this class doesn't have any heal problems anyway when using full Wizard, so I wouldn't recommend doing that, because um, that'll sacrifice your uh, damage output. So yeah. Pretty easy, unstable if you can, but uh, don't worry about it, it's not too much of an issue, and go wizard enhancements, wizard gets you the best results. That's full wizard by the way. Uh, now as for your passives in this class, it uses three different passives, the rank 10 passive is like a permanent thing, so you have to get it rank 10 to get this passive, and I would recommend doing it. Um, you have an increase in your intellect by 15%, you have an increase in your haste by 15%, and on your rank 10 you have an increase in your damage by 15%. Now the haste increase is actually really interesting because it means that every cooldown that you're given in the tooltips for this class is actually wrong by 15%. It's actually, uh, when it says 4 seconds, it's actually 15% less than 4 seconds. So um, that's actually really interesting and I'll get into a good, a cool point with that later on. Anyway, so as for the abilities, um, there are two things that I recommend you keep stacking over and over again throughout the, your usage of this class when soloing. Your first and your second ability. So your first ability, stacking it, is going to give you 3% extra damage per stack, and it's going to stack up to 50 times, and it lasts 10 seconds if you don't happen to restack it just as the, cooled, uh, the cooldown runs out. Um, but really, it doesn't consume much mana. It's 10, it's 10 mana consumption with a 4 second cooldown, so just keep spamming that over and over again. And pretty much the same principle with the second ability. Second ability, it decreases your opponent's chance to hit by 5% every time you use it, um, and that stacks to 5 and so, and that lasts 12 seconds. So just keep stacking your first and second ability over and over again and you'll be fine. Um, both of those two deal damage, however, your second ability deals a, like a quite significant damage, it says. It's about 1.5k, so a bit that doesn't miss and it can't crit. So it's about 1.5k each time. But with the first ability, that increases your damage by 3% per stack. So you your damage on every other ability, including the first one actually, um, increases as time goes on in the soloing fight. Now your third ability is where this class starts to get interesting. It's called Illuminate, and it consumes 20 mana and has a 12 second cooldown. Now what it does is it heals you for 300% spell damage, which is, in, in, in uh, practice, it's about 1k, it's just under 1k, um, but as time goes on that increases, I think because of your first ability, although I'm not sure about that. Um, it also applies an effect called Illuminated, which increases your damage, crit, uh, crit damage, crit chance, hit chance, dodge chance, haste and damage resistance by 15% for 12 seconds. That doesn't stack, but because of that passive, the rank 4 passive that increases your haste by 15%, it actually means that this ability cooldown, which says 12 seconds, and the effect is 12 seconds long, you technically shouldn't be able to loop it, but you can because of the 15% haste buff. So uh, yeah, this only consumes 20 mana, and your mana regeneration is pretty good with this class. So. In my opinion, I reckon spam this as well. Just spam your heal as much as you can. But if you are running into mana issues, then I'd recommend laying off spamming your heal um, and just work on spamming the first two abilities, which will generate their own mana anyway because of the damage they do. Because this mana, uh, this uh, this class, along with most classes in the game, regain mana from hits you land in combat, which is more effective with crits. Now, your final ability is a big nuke. It's called Burn by Light, and it consumes 35 mana with a 15 second cooldown. It does massive damage, um, and then deals 700 damage over time for 10 seconds. 700% damage over time, that is, not 700 damage. Um, now, this nuke, in practice, works really, really effectively. Most soloing fights, you aren't gonna get uh, 50 stacks with the uh, in the spotlight effect from the first ability. However, you uh, are gonna get a decent amount of them, and just generally, I've noticed you 
you uh, hit with your last ability, about 3.5k non-crit and about 10k crit if you're using an unstable weapon. And if you're using a stable weapon, then you crit sort of like 7, 8k, 9k sort of thing. Um, it depends, again, on how long the fight's been going because of the stacks of the first ability. When you think about it, 50, 50 stacks is 200 seconds. So 200 seconds is a long time, actually. And uh, most fights only last like 60, 90 seconds sort of thing, even if they're like really long. So you're you're almost never going to get full stacks of uh, your first ability unless you're soloing something like, I don't know, Doom Overlord? Something with lots and lots of health. So uh, yeah, overall the combo I'd recommend using, it's not really a particular combo to be honest. It's not really like an ability I recommend applying before any other abilities. You just sort of... I guess if you want to start with something, I'd start with your heal, go straight in for your illuminated effect, and then you go straight into spamming two and three and using five whenever you can. So just go two, three, uh, sorry, four, two, three, five, four, two, three, five, as much as you can, spamming everything as soon as it's available. Um, and if you run into mana problems, then lay off spamming your heal for a bit and just work on regaining that mana until you're ready. Um, now as for how good this class is for soloing, this is the review section of this video. Um, it's really good for soloing. It's an incredibly good soloing class. Now, one weakness it does have compared to other really good soloing classes like Legion Doom Knight, like Stone Crusher, like Arch Paladin, and even Void High Lord, um, it, it does lack a little bit in the survivability department. It doesn't really decrease the amount of damage the enemy does to you, so there are some bosses that you simply cannot solo, like Desolich. However, Desolich is a pretty extreme example. I mean, you know, Desolich does have some of the highest damage in the game. Um, but something like Void High Lord does reduce the amount of damage the enemy does to you, so it does lack, Lightcaster does lack this in, in uh, some respect. But really, it's one of the best soloing classes in the game. Its only real flaw is the fact that its heal is kind of weak. I mean, it's only 1k, it only heals you for about 1k, um, and it's on a fairly long cooldown, 12 seconds is quite long, um, but like, it's not a big deal. You Most, most situations in AKW, you're going to find yourself absolutely fine with that heal. Um, its damage output is really, really good. It, its damage output is one of the highest in the game, if not the second highest, only to only beaten by Void High Lord. I will do a full class comparison with this versus Stone Crusher and Arch Paladin and all those other classes, so we will, I will be able to determine eventually what the best second best soloing class is in the game. But from preliminary testing, this seems to be better than Stone Crusher, and it seems to be better than Arch Paladin, although I can't be be uh, sure of that. What's my opinion on how this class is to use though? Like is it fun to use? And my honest opinion on that is no, it's not fun to use at all. Um, in my opinion, something that's fun to use is something that's sort of, I guess, has effects that sort of affect other abilities in really unique ways. And I, it's hard to explain because I'm not a very creative person, so I, don't, I wouldn't be able to creatively design a fun class. But something, it doesn't really have any, any, uh, any original parts to it. You know, this and Arch Paladin are very similar. Let's, let's take a look at this again, uh, this versus Arch Paladin just for what the abilities do. You've got a stackable effect, which increases your damage on the first ability, and then you've got a heal ability, which casts a heal onto you and applies some other effects as well, and then you've got an ability which you you can apply, which increases your um, survivability. Now for Arch Paladin, that's your, a fourth, uh, your third ability, and then for Lightcaster, that's your second ability. So you increase your survivability a little bit with that. And then finally, you've got a nuke. Both of those classes share all of those attributes. They've all, they've both got all of those attributes and they're both pretty boring to use. Um, and so even though Lightcaster is a really, really, really good soloing class, it's incredibly good. It's pretty boring, honestly. If you're looking for something that's fun to use, I honestly would not recommend this class. Um, if, but if you're looking for a really good soloing class, then this is, this is, this is a really, really good class. Um, a lot of classes like that, there are a lot of classes that are just kind of boring though in AQW, so um, this is just one of many, I suppose, but, you know, it's, it's pretty boring to use, but it's, it's really good. So, do with that what you will. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.